proud and excited to introduce you to some of our most fabulous artists. You know, all of them have homes here, and some originated here. But Bart, are you a native too? I've been here since I was two. Okay. Oh, oh, right, so right next to me, Barbara Rudolph, since she was two, a couple of years. And where did you go to high school? Saguaro. Saguaro, oh. right by me. Okay. Robin Demore. I. Currently living. Okay. Both here in Washington. In Washington, in Vancouver, Washington. Okay. And then, um, and I, from the time I was 10 till I graduated from high school, or uh, college, uh, I went, I lived here. You, you're a I native girl. Yeah. Hey. And Jenny Stewart? I live here, and uh, over in Peoria, and I grew up outside of Chicago. Okay. Well, I'm glad that we're all here today together, and we can share with our wonderful crowd all about your beautiful work and um, so I kind of I kind of already got the where you're from part but if you let's start by having each of you um, tell the audience where or how long you've been doing what you're doing and just one reason why realism is what speaks to you Barbara. Yeah. Hi, I'm Barbara Rudolph and um, I think I've been drawing and painting since I was very very young and I always loved detail, so it kind of evolved over the years from pen and ink to watercolor, and acrylic, and now oil. And I've been with the Celebration of Fine Art 21 years. I can't believe wow. it. I should get a pin. <laughs> I need to keep up with that stuff. Yeah. There's an award for that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, my name is Robin Damore. And uh, I have been painting for uh, 23 years. I started painting when I was 45. And uh, I uh, uh, only really do portraiture. Um, if you saw my <coughs> landscapes, you would say, oh, uh, that's <laughs> nice. Uh, so I, 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 I really like the, the rigor of um, of getting a specific face and a specific attitude uh, in a painting. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I really like uh, realism. Uh, I don't care about um, abstract art. I'm sorry you abstractors out there. Uh, I, I had a teacher that said, um, you know, abstract art, how do you know if you're getting any better? I think I'm just more practical. You know, when you're when you are working on a specific head, you know if it's your person or not. And uh, so that's that's what I care about. I love it. I love it. That's why we're all unique and different. I love it. Jenny. My name is Jenny Stewart. Um, I've been, I guess, an artist since I was in about fourth grade. I think I have something that said I was going to be an artist when I grew up when I was in fourth grade. I think. Um, <laughs> Yeah, contrary to college when they tell you, oh, you can't make a living doing this. So um, it's what I always wanted to do, and I, all of my instructors I fought with the entire time about loosen up, loosen up, loosen up, and it's, it's just <laughs> not in my genetics. So realism is just, is just me. That's great. And, and aren't we lucky? I mean, when, the thing I love about the realism is literally sometimes you have to ask yourself, is that a photo or is that a painting? And um, each of these artists in their own style, um, you have, you each have a little twist to what they do. And one of the, reasons, one of the things I love about Robin's uh, portraits is almost every portrait incorporates some specific item that has significant meaning to the person in the portrait. And I love that. It's like a little secret... Um, that you add into it. And so I'm going to ask you maybe to talk a little bit about some of your portraits, like what you've got up here and um, why so, you like to add elements of their personality. So this painting right back behind me, uh, this is called Equestrian. And one of the things I really love about that painting is that um, the dog uh, that's in the painting, and often when I say the dog is in the painting, people go, oh, there's a dog in there? <laughs> um, the, the dog uh, is like an Easter egg in the painting. Like, you don't really discover him till you've spent a little time looking at the painting. 
because he really is the same color as the leather couch. And, um, and the leather couch, that was the first time that I had ever really painted leather. And, uh, and it was so, because it had such great reflections in it, it was like easy. It, it, because you know, look, you look at it and you go, well, that that's really hard. That's going to be really hard to paint. But it was actually like butter. It was very, very lovely and, and quick to paint, and and it just kind of it, it kind of evolved, evolved. The same thing with those boots that she has on. She's got on those leather boots, which have a very different kind of leather than the couch does. They're not nearly as shiny, and uh, so you know, toning down that reflection and getting the, the nature of that leather, the softness of the boot leather, is, um, uh, was, was really fun to discover. I discovered so much in that painting. Um, and the, the dog, originally, uh, in the photographs that I took of the dog, he was looking the other way, and I turned his head so that he was looking the same direction as her. And um, I love that dog. I would take that dog home in a second. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Vizla, uh, uh, like a six-month-old Vizla. And um, and then the other the other painting that's here is um, uh, uh, this guy. This is uh, Freddie. He's a Boykin. And this is the photograph that I took of him here. And this is my process that I I am a professional photographer. And so I take the photographs um, and really do the composition in the camera. And then I print it to the size of the canvas so that I can work one-to-one uh, -one, uh, on, the, on, on the head and, and the rest of it. That way, too, I can measure to make sure that I get everything in the right place, which is really key for a likeness. And some of you might recognize Freddie because he he used to hang out here a lot with uh, Carolyn Go. Yeah, he's a, he's a, uh, <laughs> this is Dutch. <laughs> Where are you going Dutch? Oh, Dutch. Yeah. Do they like each other? Yes, they do. Okay. He's, he's going to visit. Ooh. Okay. He's, he's, the, he's my studio dog and he um, uh, hangs out and usually he's right here. Yeah, but he's all match, so yeah. you can't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go see the girl. So, uh, so Robin, tell us a little bit about this beautiful woman and and the whole setting and why that setting is where you put her. Well, she um, is. Uh, she was twelve in this painting, Aww. and she um, uh, rode horses, but she also did ballet. She was very, very smart. She's now at. Um, NYU studying rocket science. You know, she's one of those uh, crazy phenoms. And um, uh, she just had such poise. And I wanted to, um, uh, this, this actual couch was in her house. And so I wanted to place her in a place that she um, would recognize in way into the future. Um, that that couch is was special to her family, and uh, so it's, it, it will stay with her forever because that painting will be in her family, uh, you know, as an heirloom. She's just beautiful. Okay, we'll talk about some of your other subjects on the next round, but okay. you, have, you have many, you have many. And um, Barbara, I'm gonna bounce over to you. If we have, yeah. if you want me to pass anything around with you know, because we have a little Chanel, but, um, your, your work just gets better and better. I can say that. I've known her 21 years, and every year it's just like, wow, oh, look what she did this year. Um, so you have a lot of symbolism with your birds, but there's way more depth to what you do. So tell us a little bit about why you do what you do. Well, people know me for usually the bird, birds in art, birds with antiques or sports, or, and really the bird story, a lot of you probably have already heard before. It's a tribute to my late father. We always loved birds, and he actually passed away 14 years ago, opening night of the show, and it was probably the biggest sale I'd ever had with my bird theme. Wow. So I kind of stuck with it and um, had a lot of fun. Now it's, you know, it's gone into um, one of the little Chanel bags. Um, you never know what direction you'll be pulled in. What, you know, when you come to the show, you think you've got all these plans, but then the audience pulls you in a different direction. 
Um, the Chanel bag is kind of fun. That's just a, a new little one. It has a little hummingbird, it's fashionista. And you know, that's something that won't wear out. You'll have it your whole life. So if you get the Chanel bag, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It's just fun. They make, it, they make you smile. I like it when my work brings a little bit of laughter, you know, joy. Um, the, the floral painting was really a blast. Um, got the birds, the butterflies. You, you, it's a little eclectic mix of flowers from all over. After the show is over, I'm always rushing to do my taxes. The big open rose in the middle was actually going to my tax appointment, so something good can come out of tax. <laughs> ended up the center of my favorite piece. <laughs> but um, the tulips I think I photographed in um, Boston and just really kind of put it together into that birds. It's called enchantment. The fly fisherman is a little bit of a new direction. I've always loved landscape art, and to me, realism art always starts, for the most part, as abstract. And then, you know, you kind of start with, oh yeah, it, uh, it starts as an abstract painting almost, but then I go into the details. And um, the fly fisherman, I like the idea of focusing on the water in the left. You can hear the water, almost, at least when I look at it. And then it brings your eye down to the fly fisherman, and then it kind of fades out on the right. And it's, everybody says, where's the bird? I tell them they're in the trees. <laughs> A little bit of a new new twist this year. <laughs> They're watching from above. Um, you, I, I still, I don't know if you want to share the story about your dad and all of his friends. Did they have? Yeah, my um, my dad did beautiful bird carvings, and he was a banker by profession, but he loved oh. to do carving, and he was really quite quite good at it. And he um, always wanted me to paint the birds, and I wasn't really listening initially, but. After he had a stroke, I decided um, to paint some small bird paintings while doing the show. And each little painting was named after one of my father's best friends. Oh. And then when I'd visit him, it would, I'd show it to him so he'd know I'd painting birds. It'd bring a smile to his face, and it would help with the memory of his friend's names. And it caught on. So the last two years of his life, you know, the two years I'd lived after his stroke, uh, it, the bird theme just took off for me. So. It's a tribute to my late father, for sure. Oh, and you do it so well. And you have a lot of fun with, um, I know you've been having lots of fun with the Chanel and the, the other uh, Louis Vuitton and the designer series. Um, and they each get a special bird. And how do you decide who goes with what brand? <laughs> well, it has to be a very stylish bird. <laughs> So one of, one of my clients um, has commissioned me to do uh, many Louis Vuitton bags now, and, um, but she had some the beautiful Louis Vuitton polka dot shoes and polka dot bag, which there's a lot of color in that piece. And she, um, so she wanted a colorful bird, so I went with the painted bunting, which is a beautiful, beautiful color. You can see a picture of it on the website, but um, it just kind of fits. So sometimes I try to think about the position of the bird or the color and, and what would what would work and, and go from there. It's not really rocket science. It's just <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, I like the fashionable bird. Of course it has to be fashionable. Perfect. So all right, and I have more questions for you next round. And um, Jenny, everything you do is exquisite. You are definitely known for your marbles, which how many of you does that just make you go, how the heck did she do that? Yes. Um, first of all, the shape, the light reflection, the colors, the textures, all of your glass pieces, but what draws you to the marbles? So the marbles came um, from a commission piece, actually. So some longtime clients of mine, 20 year clients, uh, came to me and said they have a very contemporary style. You know, we want something, we, we need ideas. And so I showed them a picture of close-up marbles, and they chose that. And be a photo. Thank now, you. keep in mind, I had kids and another business, and so I really hadn't painted much of, at all for about 12 years when this call came. And so I said, great, you know, we'll, we'll do marbles, and what size, and 
four feet by seven feet. Oh, oh. 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 And I agreed to all of this, and then I went, oh my god, what did I just do? So I haven't painted in more than a decade. I've just committed to doing a four foot by seven foot painting of marbles, which I've never painted before. And so it, it turned out great, they loved it. Um, and, and the marbles were born, so I've done a whole series and continue to do them from those. Um, they start out with photos that I take myself and marbles that I have and then and choose the interesting ones. Um, have some fun with the reflections. Some of them you can see my, my phone, my fingers, my hand from taking the picture reflected in the marbles, so there's some of that kind of fun stuff. Um, but they're just a, a blast to paint. They drive me a little bit insane, too. <laughs> so that's why I think I switched to flowers and other things. <laughs> I, hit, I hit my max, but, um, but the glass is, is just so much fun. And so now I have a series of, of wine and cocktails and, and just the, the glass is just a blast. All the reflections and the, the windows and the colors. And um, I just, I enjoy the challenge. Um, I love being able to step back and, you know, listen to people say, oh my gosh, you know, is, is that a photo? Is, is that not? You, you didn't paint that. So, um, I just, I, I continue to love it. It's just a lot of fun. It is, it's great. And um, the reflection, I mean, I am not an artist. People ask me all the time. I, I'm, I have an artistic eye, but I'm not an artist. But the idea of, same with the leather and, you know, being able to paint paint the surface and then paint the reflection that's on the surface. To me, that's two very different things, but the marbles and the leather and the glass wouldn't look right without the reflection. So that that's really what makes it that, that realism. Do you have a big collection of reference material, including the marbles? I do. I have thousands and thousands of photos. Um, I don't have a huge collection of marbles, but it keeps growing. Um, so I, I do have quite a few, but um, I, I have, yeah, I have thousands of photos, but sometimes the most boring photos make the best paintings as well. So I, I keep all the, I mean, I have photos that are 30 years old, but I'll still go through them and all of a sudden something has changed and oh yeah, that would be, you know, I've looked at it a hundred times and now all of a sudden it becomes a painting. So some, sometimes it's it's what I take today. Sometimes it's a 20-year-old photo that I work from. Well, and composi your composition is also spectacular. All of you, I mean, that's something we might want to talk a little bit about since this is such a realism pa panel, like the, the rules of composition, because um, how many of you have, how many of you are artists? If you're not, or even if you are, when you, like, have you tried to paint a figure or, or draw and then all of a sudden you see that the pa paper's really big and your little person's down here or, or your bottles are all different sizes. I mean, there there is a, a skill set in that that a lot of us don't understand, but what we love is that we get to look at the finished product and say, that's beautiful. But um, again, the things, like whenever I look at Jenny, it's a, my fascination, how many of you still have marbles? Because they're hard to find now. Yeah? Um, they don't make them as beautiful as they used to, but I, I, I suppose any reflective surface that's got color is fun to paint. But um, do you want to? Do any of you want to handle a little bit of the, the conversation about composition and balancing of your canvas? And anyone? I think Barbara would be really good. They're all looking at each other. I, honestly, I I do a, a lot of my composition in the camera, and I am always looking for what can go into the foreground uh, of a composition and that will bring me into the painting and then have something interesting happening back there. And I really try not to have the most interesting thing be in the middle. Uh, that it's, there are, um, you know, the rule of thirds, which, I, I'm really not the best person to speak on this, but I do try and, and place things into the side thirds of a, of a painting and um, and also to have a closer. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I try and um, 
sp I, I spend quite a bit of time on the composition before I paint it, and I try and get it the way I want it to look in the painting with Photoshop, with, um, with painting in Photoshop, <coughs> and so that when I print a photograph to the size of the canvas, uh, it's um, essentially what I'm gonna paint. And then when I start to paint, uh, and I see that something doesn't work, that's when the suffering begins. And then I, I will rework pieces and move things around. Uh, but I try and make sure that things are where I want them to be, uh, you know, from the start. Before I have the others answer that question too, you are working right now on a, a lovely portrait of a young man. And I was talking with you the other day about it with my stepmom, and we were, Anne asked a really good question, but you talked to us about the original photograph that the family picked had his glasses, and you did a demo and painted him without glasses, and then they saw that. That was really interesting, and the difference in those two, he looks much younger with the glasses on, but t share that little story a little bit. Well, I, I photographed this boy, he was 10, I photographed him with his glasses on, and everybody knew in the family knew him with his glasses on, and he kind of looks like Harry Potter with these glasses on. And I said, let's to shoot a few without the, the glasses on, and he's incredibly handsome. Like, you can see the man that he's going to be. And uh, so they chose the one with the glasses on, and I was like, fine, I'm going to do this other painting just for me then? And then they saw that and they were like, okay, we want to change our mind. <laughs> so I ended up uh, completely uh, doing the one that I wanted to do from the start. Um, Always trust the artist. It, it is a good yeah. idea. Because especially if we're, if we're kind of attracted to something, um, it, you know, you're probably going to get better work. Uh, you know, if we're really attracted to a, a, a composition or a subject, um, you know, we're doing it because we want to, and that that can make a big difference, don't you think? Yeah, I, I think um, our painting experience sometimes, or our composition, just we kind of know what's going to work and what isn't, and some people get excited about having you do a commission for them, but they want so much in, and they keep adding more and more and more, and sometimes it's not really going to work. So you have to find that happy medium, and it's going to be a much better painting if you let the artists do what they do, which is hopefully you selected the artist, you know, because you like their style, you just have to trust a little bit that it's going to be okay. I think we'll be happier. Well, you, you bring so much, such a sense of humor to your work, and I mean, if I was commissioning you, I would just say, just do whatever you want. <laughs> Those are always my favorite people. <laughs> Where they might contribute what they want the key subject to be, but they let you create the art. Right, right. Jenny, what about, do you have anything about rules of three or thirds or whatever that's called, or commissions? I, I sort of remember those rules. Um, but those, I, those were a long time ago, so they're in my brain somewhere, but really you're, I'm just looking for, you know, something that's pleasing, and it's, it's hard to, I guess, articulate to, to other people what that is, but, you know, things just work. You don't want something in the, the middle of the canvas. Um, you know, you typically want odd numbers, although not always. Um, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not religious about the rules, for sure. She runs by intuition, you can tell. She's just yeah. super intuitive. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes following all the rules, it, I mean, it, it's nice when you're learning, but it doesn't always apply with every composition. It never always applies. <laughs> you got to know the rules so you can break them. Yeah, it has to do with lights. And, you know, like sometimes I like to set up multiple lights if I'm going to do it still life, so I get shadows from both directions. It creates this drama. And, you know, I kind of looking more about things like that when I'm starting a, a piece, you know, setting it up right, photographing it, 
and then I something that excites me. I think that that would be really cool in a painting. How do you get your titles? What do you, oh, yeah. What's your process? Titles, yeah. Because well, she has the best titles of anybody. I grew up with three brothers, and then there's also Pete down the way here. Oh, yeah. He's come up with a few that I can't repeat. <laughs> No, just just hanging out with everybody. Just, the ideas come. I wish I was younger so I could paint them all. <laughs> so I'm running out of time, but it's fun. It's fun. If something makes you laugh, you know. Sometimes, like Crime and Punishment was always a popular one. It's a Dostoevsky's book. It's laying there. And there's a little cat peeking over it, and there's a dead bird upside down. <laughs> so he's just committed a terrible crime, but he has no shame. It's called Crime and Punishment. <laughs> oh, yes, you, you've done lots of great book series as well. And, oh, yeah. and you, can have, you can have plenty of fun with that. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's humor in everything, just about, you know. You look at it, and you can have a lot of fun. I imagine with your marbles, you've got some great titles. I like Keepsies. 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 Yeah. Keepsies. Marvelous. Oh. Marble Mania. Was that one nice. almost going crazy? Was that but the yeah. big one? The Marble Mania? No, Marvelous was the, the real big one. Okay. But yeah. But no, Barbara, I have to go look at your titles now because I, I didn't pay attention. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. They're great. Well, enchantment. Some of them are, are just more, a little more mellow. More sure. regal, but there are some that are quite funny. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Oh. So, um, what have been some of the book commissions that you've done for people? Um, so about a year ago, I, there was a poet that came to the show, and um, Carol Ellison, and Lovely, I did all of her books of poetry, and we did one, I did one composition of all of her books for the palette of her Arizona Biltmore home, but then she wanted another one for her home in uh, Washington State. Okay. So it was kind of really fun to come up with the different ideas, but yeah, I've had a few authors, and I've done, I've done a lot of you know um, murder mystery books, um, bird watching, of course, dedicated to my father. But just if you have a favorite book, let me know. I'll paint it with your favorite bird. <laughs> that series you did with the poetry was beautiful, and it was very touching and. That was a lot of work. That was a, a big, a big deal, a commission, a lot of time. But if she had how many different? They're all independent little poetry books on different topics or subjects. How many? Yeah, I had her flute in one of them. All of the books. Each book had a different title, and they were stacked in different positions in each composition. Um, just things that were important to her and significant in her life. So I can take some family heirlooms and combine them with. Um, you know, other books or whatever it is, and you're, maybe you have a special antique, um, and I just built upon it, and uh, it, it turned out really nice, I think. I, I, I was uh, excited to do them. Yeah. And it is fun. I mean, each one of you obviously do commission work, and as we just said, the, the best commissions are when you give the idea or you get the overview, and then you let, let the artist be the artist. Um, anytime we see somebody try, try to micromanage a commission, it's always like, it's almost like taking an eraser and everything. <laughs> Suddenly it's really muddy. But um, like Robin said, you pick, you pick an artist because you like what they do. So just give them some direction and let them run. But, um, and I applaud you, Jenny, for taking on such a big, wow. huge commission after, you know, Ten years of not really painting. That's some real courage yeah. there. Wow. No, that was. I, I hope you did a print. I just, it didn't occur to me until after it was done. So <laughs> I don't know. I was so excited to be, you know, painting again, and 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 I thank them multiple times because it really did kind of. As much as I always wanted to be painting, I just got sucked into other things, and that really like. How long did it take you to painting? How long did it take you to do that painting? I, I would guess 150 painting hours. So, how many how many days or did you I, work? I tried days? to do one marble a day, oh. and then I had a deadline I was trying to meet. So then I was doing two marbles a day for the for the last <laughs> last little bit. So, and did you ever say I'm about ready to lose my marbles? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that a few times. <laughs> they're they're in my booth. That's where they are. I can't lose them anymore. I can't lose them anymore. <laughs> um, 
You're not as crazy as last week's group, which is, oh, that was a handful, but um, you, one thing that's really, I think, important in your work is, are the tools that you use. And your oil, you can say why you like oil best now. I love oil painting now. Um, it's my favorite medium. I think I like the buttery consistency of it. I like blending it. It just has a richness. I know there are acrylic painters here that just do phenomenal works. And I love the fact that it dries, you know, it dries quick. But for me, I just, I have, it, it's tricky at first if you haven't used it. And, uh, but once you get the hang of it, I, I just, I absolutely love it. Just really, I don't think I'll switch. So we have the watercolor that dries instantly, and we have the acrylic that dries fairly quickly, and then the oil that can take days, and, days, and you, know. you have to do layers and let them dry, and do more layers. Of you have to be patient and work multiple paintings at a time with oil. So you can do a section, then you got to put it. I have to put it aside. I can work on something else and then go back to it. So it takes a little longer for commissions to be completed because you have to be patient. They have to be dry before you can varnish as well. So are you oil? I'm oil. Yeah. I, I can't imagine trying to paint um, a portrait in acrylic. Uh, it just um, dries way too fast because I am uh, to create skin tones, I'm painting layer upon layer upon layer. Uh, to create a reali realistic skin tone. And um, uh, it, it, acrylic just dries way too fast. Plus, it doesn't have the luminosity that oil has. And, um, and I use a lot of brighter colors. It, in, the, in, a, in a Caucasian skin tone, there's some really beautiful, bright, colors that are not necessarily obvious, but when you put them in, they really, it, it looks like there's blood in, you know, like behind the skin. <laughs> like it looks, it looks, it looks right. So it's not just one Crayola color? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> all the different colors. And that's what radiates. I mean, you see that radiating palette of, of all the skin tones that you do. It's really fun to paint people of color because they have such great reflections in their skin. And um, and you can use a richer uh, color palette uh, when you when you're working on, on people of color and and they they're I'm just working on a a, a, a man um, and he has a he has a bald head and he's black and he's got green reflected in his head he has red reflected in the top of his head and uh, and to be able to paint green right on the top of somebody's head, that is, that's a bug. That's good. That is good. Definitely. Um, and then as far as the other two, your oil also? I am oil. Um, I've never seriously done any other... I started painting in oil when I was 10, thanks to my mom. And um, I've tried all the other, and it's just... It's what I know. So I, all I do is fight with acrylics because it's, it's just not what I'm used to. I love watercolor as well, but um, oil is definitely... Oils are medium. And then um, your brushes. And Do any of you use something other than brushes to apply? I use a natural sponge uh, to, when I want to get a, um, a very distressed looking uh, background. I did this um, kind of falling down Italian wall and I used a, a collection of these um, uh, natural sponges uh, that really gave me a very random kind of uh, distress and brokenness to the wall. That was really fun. And I also will um, drip paint uh, into a background. I will spray uh, paint with a, with a splatter brush. Uh, I will uh, drip, you know, like use very wet paint and let it drip down. And um, and do do stuff that um, is going to surprise me. Uh, so a, a whole bunch of different, uh, a lot less um, controlled. Uh, and then you can, if you have that kind of a a very abstract kind of uncontrolled background, you can come over it with something that's very tight, a head that's tight, and have that contrast between the. The, a very recognizable head and a very um, distressed uh, abstract background and have that contrast be very interesting. 
Mm. Highlights that clarity then. Yeah. 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 And then what about you, brushes? Or? Mostly brushes. Uh, I love the rosemary brushes, and I've used little tiny um, detail brushes. But I, I also, like, the fly fishing, and I use palette knife. I love to use a palette knife. And spritzing, sometimes I just did a little um, snowbird painting, and the final layer was like a whole toothbrush, and I just yeah. mix up that oil and spritz that snow on and let it set. Oh, and yeah. um, just kind of, there's just about anything you can, you know, the little credit cards, you want straight lines, you can kind of use your old credit cards and carve into your wet oil. There's so many things you can use, but brushes mainly. I love those little tidbits. I, I was just going to say it too, I also work in charcoal and I will use um, powdered charcoal on a very thick paper and then um, uh, spray it with acetone. And the acetone will uh, dissolve the charcoal, but give you a um, really a, it almost finishes the painting for you in, in terms of the edges. It gives you really really great edges. If anybody is working in charcoal, you might just try that technique of spraying it with acetone. The acetone dries immediately, but it messes it up beautifully first. Yeah, really really nice. And then you go in with some hard edges over that, that mess and really create like a, a great head, uh, head of hair, uh, uh, that, that kind of thing. Uh, I use mostly brushes, nothing, nothing fancy really or expensive. They're kind of beat up and not great <laughs> for the most part. Um, the only thing that might be different is I use a, some really soft brushes, even like makeup brushes, um, that get rid of brush marks and smooth and that kind of thing. So um, makeup brushes come in handy sometimes. Yeah, save them because they're always sable too. If you buy a sable paintbrush, it's going to cost you 50, 60 bucks. But the makeup brushes, are good. It's good. they're good brushes. That is a good tip. I like them. Always use natural hair brushes on your face. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and if you were here last week, or if you weren't, you can watch online, but we all know t uh, Trevor Swanson is very, very particular and protective of his brushes. His brushes get a spa night every night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe you should ask him. He takes them home and he puts olive oil in them. Awesome. <laughs> Judy that's by me does that as well. She does mineral spirits and then yeah. soap and then this and then, and I'm like, one coat and they go in the drawer. <laughs> They're done. I do think one of the most fun things at the show is to go around and look at all of the different palettes and their brushes and their tools because that's the creativity behind what they do and it's um, you can't do that anywhere else. I mean, you can you can literally see everybody's different palettes here. It's very cool. Um, I had a question. Oh, back to you and the, the subject matters. You have a, a a print now of a painting you did of a of a man. Who was sitting with a stack of books, and when he came, you you were talking with him, trying to help him figure out what he wanted in his painting, and the books didn't get named until later. Can you share about that? So uh, this man uh, is a uh, he's a personal growth facilitator, and he's he is black, and he's from Oklahoma, and he was coming into my studio for the photo shoot. And, um, and I said, well, bring an heirloom or something that we could use to incorporate into the painting. And he said, I have 21 first cousins, none of whom have fathers. There are no uh, heirlooms in my family, but I love books. So I shot him with a, uh, a stack of books, and he ended up sitting on the ground with this stack of books between his legs and you know kind of resting on the top of the books and um, and then he told me what the titles of all the books would be and one of them was the one he wants to write uh, which is permission granted and one of them uh, was Invictus which is a is a poem uh, one of them is a, a key tenet of what he teaches which is to think is to create if you're gonna uh, it, you, before you create anything, you have to think of it, and when you begin thinking, you have begun the process of creating. And uh, and then also, Mary Williamson's Our Deepest Fear. Um, so those, uh, and, and several others, 
but they really helped to tell the story of his life uh, in this portrait. And I painted that, that, that painting initially, and I entered it in a competition, and I thought, this is going to win. This is fantastic. Of course, it's not, nothing. Crickets. And, um, and then I looked at what won, and I thought, OK, I, I understand why this painting did not win. And I repainted the painting, and, uh, and I took it up, up to a whole other level. It taught me so much painting this painting. And um, the hardest thing in the painting, even though I've got his hands, his feet, his incredible clothing and watch and shoes, uh, was the books. And, um, and painting those books, uh, I easily spent 60 hours. I really wished I had Barbara and I could just um, uh, partner with you. And you could come paint the books and I'll paint the person. Because it was, it was very, very challenging to paint the books. Since then, I've done a number of paintings based on that painting. Uh, and people have given me really hard books. I think they really, you know, like I had one that was uh, Star Wars that had a, a complete like nebula and you know all and, and anyway it's very hard for me to do uh, lettering it's very challenging but um, it's uh, it also I think adds a lot to the story when you can add uh, titles of books that are important to the sitter. Mm. Didn't somebody give you a tip on lettering? No. Well, Barbara has given me some yeah. tips, and also Richard Hall, uh, yeah. about cre you create a, a box of, um, of color, and then you subtract out uh, using a, 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 um, a credit card. You subtract out <coughs> the, the spaces between the lines. I don't know if that made any sense to anybody, but um, I still don't have it down. Not like Barbara. Her, her, yeah, her books are fantastic. Really, really good. Oh, I need that. <laughs> Artists are good at putting credit cards to good use, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that little scrapey thing. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> um, is there, you've all done commissions. Is there, is there ever been one that you were like, just said no to the person who wanted a commission? Or is there one that you wish you could do? I have said no. Oh, yeah. no. I sent them all to Judy. <laughs> not, not all of them. If they want their, you know, usually their animal or something, she could, it would take me a month and she'd have it done quick. <laughs> She's so good. <laughs> Judy is really good. She is fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. I, I, I uh, like to take my own photographs and sometimes people go, I have the best photograph of my, my son when he was three, he's 35 now, and it's a, you know, this big, out of focus, and, um, and you know, and his head's this big in the painting. And the, the problem is that they're looking at work uh, and thinking, my little bad photograph is going to look as good as this work here that was created from really good photographs that I shot. Um, and so I just hate the fact that I probably will not be able to meet those expectations. And so I, I used to take those commissions and I, I've stopped doing that. I, I, if I can't uh, make really good sense of an existing photograph, then I'll have I'll send them to Judy. Well, I've seen Judy work in miracles. Yeah. Yes, because she can she can see things that I cannot she, see. She has like she, um, Frank Rochapo's. I mean, yeah, miracle worker. Yes. Um, but yeah, sometimes knowing your limits is good. Yeah. No, no one to say no. Well, also I'm really interested in building a portfolio of really great work. And if I don't think a painting can be like one of my top ten, then I, I, I just think it's, um, I, I, I just don't know how much longer I have to paint. I have to be doing work that I really like. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. I think every artist has to go through a couple nightmare commissions to, to learn that that's not a good idea. Um, it, it doesn't work for them. It doesn't work for you. It, 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 you have to learn that the hard way. 
um, and I definitely have done that as well. But then sometimes the commissions are the the best pieces that you never would have dreamed up yeah. yourself. Very true. Um, I'm working on one right now that for some reason, I've never painted shoes before in my life, but for some reason I painted this little tiny 9 by 12 like red tennis shoes because I just, the laces and they just, they spoke to me and so I painted it. And a couple came in and looked at my booth and the next day, here they come walking in at another show, but, um, and the wife comes in and says, you know, my husband's a genius and he has this idea. <laughs> well, that could be really good or that could be really bad. But anyway, it was. So they have grown kids that are off, off living their own lives and in college now. They have twins and they grew up wearing Converse kind of shoes and it was kind of you know symbol of their childhood and so the husband had the idea that let's do two pairs of their Converse tennis shoes and it's gonna hang in their you know their guest room where they used to be the kids room and so forth and everyone has gone nuts over it and I'm sure there are gonna be more shoes in my future which is great because they were a blast to paint but I, I never would have thought that to do that so, I would think you'd be fantastic at shoes. They were a blast to paint. I, mean, I love them. So it's like a natural yeah. for you. They were so yeah. much fun. I love it. high top covers or low tops, but high tops. A little nostalgia for me there. Um, yeah. So on that on that subject, is there something that you haven't painted yet that you you see in your future, Miss Barbara? There's a lot of things I want to do. I definitely want to paint larger. I think I went a little larger this year, but I want to go even bigger, which means I need a bigger car. So that <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely have a lot of ideas. I get excited, you know, I mean, I'm excited during the show, but even when the show ends, it's kind of fun because you can start painting again without, you know, stop and go, stop and go, and you can really focus on doing what you love to do. And, and um, I just, I don't know. I love doing the antiques, definitely. I'm having a blast doing the fly fishermen, too. So there could be some more wildlife, but bigger. <laughs> it is um, an um, incredible skill set for you guys to, to do the stop and start. And we appreciate that because it gives us the opportunity to talk to you and ask you what you're doing. Um, but we also want to recognize you to, to acknowledge that because it's a very different environment than being sequestered in your studio alone with no distractions, but it's also a very uh, rich environment as far as inspiration and Definitely ideas. Definitely is. Being here really, I think, being around other artists, it's, it's amazing. I, I get it. a lot of work done here. Yeah, you can. Yeah. It takes me about two weeks to really get used to the stop and go, and then you just do it. I don't know. Get used to it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really love the, the, just the quick breaks when I'm talking to people. And then I come back to it with, you know, fresh kind eyes. of fresh eyes. And I've gotten uh, eight paintings so far since the show opened. I've gotten really? eight paintings close to finish, 95% or so. And I have three more to work on uh, while I'm here. And I think, uh, I think I can get them done. And um, I, I feel like some of the best painting I do is here at the show. And, uh, and I get really good energy from the people coming through. Uh, the people, you know, have the really interesting questions and they, um, uh, they, they will, we, we will talk, you know, it's, it's, it's good. And my one thing that I want to do is, um, in my booth, I did a, uh, a couple paintings of Nichelle Nichols, who was Lieutenant O'Hara from Star Trek. And um, when I did the photo shoot for, the, for those um, paintings, I, I, I shot one, I shot a couple hundred images, but there were three that she picked. And there's one more that, um, that I really, that's very different from the other two that I want to paint. And then I want to see if maybe we can get it into like her hometown museum or something like that. So I, I think that would be a fun thing. I might do that next year at the show. That would be great. Yeah, that, those paintings are beautiful and with the fabric involved and everything about them. And one now lives at the National Portrait. The Smithsonian in the Portrait National Gallery. Portrait Gallery. Where? Yeah. Where? The Smithsonian in the National Portrait Gallery. Right. 
the Smithsonian yeah. and the National Park. They said a fancy truck and everything to pick it up, right? Yeah, it was. It, it's the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. So it's it is really a special. Very impressive. Yeah. We're proud of you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sunny slope girl. Yeah, I love it. Um, Jenny, what about you? Is there something you haven't painted yet? Oh, you talked about the shoes, but I mean, I just want to paint it all. I well, I since I had such a long break and I'm and now I'm back. I just I feel like I miss time. Like I just want to paint. I want to paint everything. So whatever strikes my eye, I just try to go and I want to paint it all. Lucky for us, that's great. I love it. Um, before we start to wrap up, I'd like to see if there's anybody has any questions. Um, yes, yes. Um, I'll let you help. Lady in the back, and then Ned. So, lady in the back with the blue. Jenny, um, I'm an oil artist, also very new at it, by the way. But I would like to know your process of getting the shine on your wine bottles. Um, is that something that, you know, is it a glaze or, or do you just need a light, lighter color over it? Or? Some of it is a glaze. Um, I didn't use to glaze at all and the marbles and the glass and the wine have, have taught me, I guess, how to glaze. I never really did that before. Um, so some of it is, a lot of it is painting what you, what you see and not what you think you see. Um, if you can manage to do that because your, your brain tricks you constantly and tells you what's there and that's not what's there because the reflection and the, so for the glaze on a lot of the reflections, normally I use titanium white and it's relatively opaque. Um, I have flake white, um, what's the other white? Zinc. Zinc white. Zinc white's more transparent, so I, I will use that to do some of the reflections after it's dry. Some of, some of the reflections, especially on the marbles, like the window reflections, I will do when it's wet, and a shade lighter, but with the color, and then I'll go back after it's dry with usually the zinc white and put some of the reflections or the different glazes on top. So, um, so the zinc white just goes over the color. You're not mixing it with the green either. Right? Not just sometimes, but most of the time it's just the white over the top to give it that frosted look. Mm. Because, for example, the red is the hardest one to do because if you need a lighter colored red, you mix white with it, you get pink, and it looks chalky, and it looks terrible, and it's not right. So you can do it by adding yellow and keeping keeping it warm to a certain extent, but then once it's dry, you can go over it with the with the zinc white and get those those frosty looks without it turning pink. So like, Good question. Yeah. Good answer. Yes, this is a very similar question. Uh, might seem naive at the beginning, but I'm just fascinated by the different textures and colors of these uh, images that we're looking at here. Very similar to the question was just asked. I don't know if you buy commercial paint. We've talked a lot about brushes, but we haven't talked about paint. And I'm assuming that there's tubes of paint that are out there that you purchase, but Certainly, all these different colors aren't incorporated into that. I'm just wondering, all the years, how you have, you know, manipulated what you purchase in terms of paints or mix. I've read about how in the, you know, Renaissance and medieval times they had to mix their own paints and do all this. But how do you get these stunning, different colors? from what you, uh, I mean, do you mix your own paints or how do you Yeah, do you have to mix your color. There's good paint too, and then there's um, like student grade. If you want to use a professional grade, so if it's a cadmium yellow, you're really getting that rich color that you want. And, it, and with the mixing the colors, it's, it's a much more vibrant painting, what you say. You don't want to use them straight out of the tube. Um, and there's so many good ones to choose from. I mean, I personally you started with Lucas, and now I'm kind of moving to a brand called Marco Harding, which I really love. Um, 
but they're really rich and buttery. And but there's so uh, Rumbacher is wonderful. There's so many good ones. But you have to learn, yeah, to mix them. But buy the artist quality. You don't want to buy the student grade. Um, I find because they fade. I, I don't think they hold their color. Well, student grade has a, a much lower pigment uh, volume. Or you know, in a tube of paint, there's a lot less in a student grade paint. I'm not even sure why they sell student grade paint because you know you can try and mix a, a white, and it just you're just adding more and more, and you can't you can't get to white. Um, and uh, I would say, as long as you're using a professional grade paint, they're all really good, and then you're just going to have you know preferences. Judy, what do you use? What 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 uh, brand of paint do you use? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, see? See, she uses all different brands. And you know, it's, it's sometimes in one color, you're gonna like uh, one color and a brand better. And um, I've, I've switched uh, a bunch to Viseri, which is a, a small uh, batch paint that's made in New York. Uh, and it's super buttery. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. It stays wet on my palette for, um, until it's gone. I mean, it, it's it's amazing how, how great it is. Um, but what do you think, Jen? I have all different, I have a lot of gambling, but I, 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 I also too. have oil paints, tubes that are probably 30 years old that are still good and still work. And um, But yeah, the, the high quality paint is, is a must, because um, otherwise you're just gonna frustrate yourself trying to mix. Um, I would say too that for the most part, like these bright colors that she's got here, are not like it's, you're seeing it as a bright color. But she's got a lot of other colors that have gone in to create that that one color. You know, it's not a right. And there's there's not many things you know, that you're gonna paint or that are in life that are straight cad yellow. There just aren't, except for here. <laughs> but, <laughs> Cad yellow is very transparent. It takes me three, four coats of yellow to get that to the look I want. Otherwise, you're just seeing canvas through it. So there are some colors that just there's. But no you can see that it. on that cad yellow marble, it looks round. It, it's not like a straight yellow out of the, the tube. She's got green happening down below and reflected light that from that other the red marble. You know, all of those things help to make it look 3D. That's beautiful. There was a question in the chat about how you decide where to sign your pieces and if you've ever used like a ghost name or a pet name. Good question. I always sign mine, usually the bottom right corner if there's not room for some reason, the bottom left. But I have used uh, yeah, I, I worked for a publishing company, Richard Hall, a bunch of us, um, I think Barry Giddings, a whole bunch of us years ago worked for this publishing company, and when you left, there is a non-compete clause, but you have to paint to make a living, so we'd use a ghost name for a year or two. Mm -hmm. That's a long time ago. What was your ghost name? What was your name? I used um, my mother's maiden name, Thong. <laughs> <laughs> Our mother's maiden name. I usually sign in bottom corner, left or right, whatever whatever fits. Um, no, I've never used a, a pen name. I haven't either. I, I, I got this married name of Damore, and it's such a great oh, last name. name. Yeah, it's it's such a, I would never That's give it up. Love. Yeah. That's why I kept Rudolph. It was my married name as well. Yeah. Maiden name is Johnson, so yeah. Rudolph just worked. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can give it some thought. If you were going to have a nom de plum, what would it be? Oh. Oh. <laughs> you have an alter ego. Um, good questions. Good questions. So um, I think we're just about out of time, unless there's anything I didn't ask you that I should have. But I want to say thank you to Barbara Rudolph, Robin Demore, Jenny Stewart. Um, please take my interviews at the studio. And um, thank you all for being here, and we look forward to seeing you same time next week.